the 9th of October 2024. Disclaimer, news events, right. Today, I'd like to talk a bit about the Chinese market rally and uh, navigating the risks and the opportunities. So before um, we want to go too much, I, I believe there's a lot of articles written about uh, what has happened already. But I like to, you know, uh, from an analytical point of view, like this, always study first the historical part of it. And in the past, uh, what actually happened uh, from a direct result of this kind of rallies, right? So the Chinese market has a history of sharp rallies driven by government interventions. Notable examples include the 47% rally in 2020 and the 54% rally in 2022, both of which eventually collapsed when government support either waned or failed to address deeper economic issues. The recent 30% rally bears a striking resemblance to these past patterns. So unlike the steadier S&P 500, the Chinese market is characterized by intense volatility with frequent big movements both ways. Major policy shifts such as the 2021 crackdown on the tech and education sectors have caused investors panic and significant outflows breaking long-term structural uptrends. Right now, you know, um, when I talk about this, you know, you always, uh, you, you can see that it's a struggle uh, between the fund managers, like want to think about, you know, taking advantage of the, the quality Chinese companies that are deeply, deeply discounted right now and has real value. But at the same time, while thinking whether they want to go in or not, they are also a bit apprehensive of going in because uh, of what the, the uh, China has done in the past with a wave of a hand, the, the Chinese government could actually crash the stock market just like that, it's done in the past, right? So that's why right now, there are a few things they need to see first before actually moving in. Now, the government stimulus has historically acted as both a catalyst for short-term rallies and a potential and a potential risk factor. While interventions like liquidity injections Rate cuts and share buybacks provide immediate boosts. Their long-term success, however, depends heavily on consistent and comprehensive policy follow-through. So the, the key word here as going forward here is this, the follow-through. Okay? So let's look into the current risk. Why some fund managers from outside, you know, the foreign fund managers are still a bit apprehensive, you know, investing in the in China. So first of all, let's look at the current risk. So top in the list, of course, is the policy uncertainty. The market sustainability hinges on the Chinese government's maintaining its current support measures. Past experience like sudden regulatory crackdowns in 2021 shows that the government can rapidly change market dynamics. If the government fails to deliver on its promises or reverse policies, the current rally could collapse. On top of that, there's also the valuation risk. The CSI 300 index is currently trading at a PE ratio of 14, which is slightly above its 10-year average of 12.63. The Hansing index is near its 10-year average, signaling that while the market isn't extremely overvalued yet, continued rallies without a fundamental economic improvement could lead to overheating. Okay. And lastly, in, under the current risk, we have the economic challenges, persistent issues such as deflationary pressures, a slowing property market, a weak consumer spending could undermine market stability. This economic aid wins pose a risk to both market performance and investor sentiments. Now, um, the recent stimulus is actually trying to boost this property market. So we want to see, is it successful? That's why I said, key point here, is there a follow-up to it, right? So next, we look into the opportunities. Government support the recent rally is largely driven by aggressive government intervention, including liquidity injections. 
reserve requirement cuts for banks and supports for the property market. If the Chinese government follow through on its current stimulus measures and addresses deeper economic issues, this could lay the groundwork for a sustained multi-year bull market. Huh? So it depends on this. So if you want to, to really hold on, we need to look and study of what is the Chinese government doing from here onwards if you want to really invest right there. So if they really follow through, yes, you would, could actually see uh, stocks keep on rising and that's a good thing for for though because right now it's really what I call dirt cheap. We have also undervalued stocks. Despite recent gains, some quality Chinese companies remain undervalued. For example, stocks like Ping An Insurance, you know, insurance is a cash generating uh, machine and it's really one of the favorites of investors like Warren Buffett, you know, you have access to all this free cash and looking into places to invest, right? Uh, another stock is Alibaba. Um, they're still trading below their intrinsic values. And this provides an opportunity for long-term investors willing to endure market volatility, right? So not only that, there are many other stocks inside them, just bringing out stocks that personally I'm, I'm holding them. So just to let you know, because I've done uh, some research there as well. So, but that doesn't mean that, you know, um, you should jump in, dive in and go and say, please do your own due diligence as well, right? So, whenever you want to jump in into the Chinese market, there are a few things that you need to actually, uh, what do you call, monitor as well. And monitor really, really well. Because if there are any kind of uh, what they call um, alarming things, you know, the changes, no follow through, get out straight away, you know, all that kind of things. So what are the two key areas that I want you all to monitor and we do it together? Number one is the policy follow through. The most critical factor to watch is whether kind government maintains stimulus efforts. You know, this is the first part. There's a second part coming and a third part coming just to ensure that there is a continuity. Okay, that includes liquidity support, money easing, and targeted interventions in key sectors like property and banking. Right? They continue to do that. And two, economic data tracking China's GDP growth, inflation rates, consumer spending, and property market conditions will provide insights into the effectiveness of government interventions and the overall health of the economy. As such, as a conclusion, a balanced approach is crucial. Focus only on quality stocks. Don't speculate, okay? These quality stocks must have strong fundamentals that remain undervalued or fairly valued. Most important key point, earnings drive the economy, okay? They drive the price of the stock, sorry, okay? So that's why I said most important focus on stocks with track record of sustainable growing earnings to weather market volatility. If they they there must be grow earnings growth, sales growth, revenue growth. Without these three, don't look into them. I have to be very, very clear because we need to be extra extra careful we are trading in a uh, volatile market something that can change at least uh, you know very well you are investing in quality stocks okay so be prepared to adjust positions based on key indicators such as government policy actions technical resistance levels market valuations and economic data right Okay, so with that, that's the report for today.